Lance is without the fluffy mic shield. Testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, one, two, three. This is Corey Lefever with Garden Fever. Hello, welcome back to Garden Fever. I'm Corey Lefever, your host, and I'm coming to you from Northern Utah. Got a lot to talk about today, so let's get right into it. First thing and most exciting thing that I wanted to tell everybody is I got a new camera system. I mentioned it on my uh, Instagram and my Twitter and whatnot, but uh, for those of you who don't follow that and only follow me on YouTube, I got a new system. A long time coming. Uh, I was running my YouTube channel off of a cheap digital camera. It did okay at first, a uh, free movie maker. Uh, to edit my videos, uh, it, it became very apparent to me very quickly that I needed to upgrade my, my stuff. Poor sound quality, okay imaging, uh, no script, uh, poor editing software. So I've been happy to tell everyone that I've been able to upgrade quite a bit. I got Camtasia, uh, got a, a Nikon D5300. Which I'm very, very rookie at this. When I first started out for YouTube, I had no idea I was going to have to be a, a director, an editor, a, you know. Uh, I had a lot of great ideas. I had a lot of things I wanted to share. A lot of, you know, I just, I was excited to get into it. I didn't really f think about that. Kind of silly now, but uh, now that I've kind of gained some momentum, it's definitely time for an upgrade. So I'm happy to say it's happened. So, with that, we'll get right into it. Um, I wanted to point out this uh, plum tree behind me. Uh, for those of you who uh, know, I just moved into this property, so I haven't had time. I, I kind of came late in the year, and I didn't have a whole lot of time. I started a new job, moved my whole family. So, I couldn't get a garden really going this year. So, I've decided this year to kind of to prep the best I can for next year. That way, next spring, we can hit the ground running. I installed a fence. I put in all my fruit trees, grapevines, raspberries. A lot of the perennial stuff that takes several years before you start getting fruit, I put in right away. But I didn't, I, you know, there's tons of grass as you can see behind me. So I've been prepping it, trying to get it ready. So with that, I'll go into what I've been doing and how I've been doing it and why I've been doing it and I'll give you some tips for the month. So, as you can see from a previous video, and I'll put the links to the videos I'm referencing, I uh, built a walkway first, because it's gonna be a permanent walkway. So this is, some of the weeds have overgrown because all the mulch is getting moved around, which was intended to keep the weeds down. But what ended up happening is I didn't have enough foresight. So that's part of the tip of the month, is to always take your time. When you're laying out your garden and planning your design, think about it, that's the bottom line. Why did this not work out very well for me? Uh, it seems to be okay, I guess. Why am I switching to the to the cement bricks or whatever and, and going over? Is because, in theory, I put down the weed block, I did the mulch, it's a permanent pathway. Should be the end of the story, 
but we have neighborhood cats and we have cats of our own so what has happened into a litter box so long story short this has become a glorified neighborhood litter box for all the cats normally i would put and advise putting habanero or chili pepper on the top of the uh, mulch and that would prevent the cats from scratching in it because trust me they don't want to do that why can i do that now i also have kids now and i don't know about you but kids play in the mulch and what happens is is they touch their eyes and then it's a very very bad day for me so what am i doing okay this is how i'm combating this this is my advice to you guys i laid down the mulch here took out all the grass and then i filled it with sticks for the winter i will remove those when i plant next year but i went ahead and did it this way because the cats won't go in there scratch around they just can't find a comfortable place to go to the bathroom it's not always a bad thing to have the cats poop and compost and dig up your garden if you're feeding them good and feeding them good stuff um, the problem is is it moves it all around it exposes the soil to the sun and it happens over and over and over to the point where it starts to kill the plant life it becomes so overly done by the cats that it no longer becomes really a compost and it starts to be just damaging to the topsoil so i'm covering it for now after winter i will remove some of this mulch not all of the mulch and i will till it again part of the problem is i have so much grass when i moved in here so what i'm going to do i got this as an example is i'm rowing it out where i'll have a row i'll remove the grass systematically and slowly and then put some mulch to cover it for the winter and the sticks to keep the cats from digging it all up and whatnot and then next spring i will till remove some of it and till some of it in again okay and then the following year i will do this so over the period of the year we'll eventually get all the grass but for now just to make the work a little less we're going to do it in little sections kind of like this anyway this is Corey lefevre with the september tip of the month